If you were asked to measure the length of a wall in your bedroom, how would you do it? I'm guessing that you would probably use a tape measure, and you'd probably measure in units of meters or feet. Now what if you were asked to measure something smaller, say the width of a pencil? A tape measure may not be the best tool to measure this, and you may not even want to use meters or feet. A better tool to measure this pencil would probably be a ruler, or maybe even a caliper, and you wouldn't want to use feet or meters. Millimeters would probably be a much better choice. From these two examples, we can see that there are many different tools and many different units of measurement. Depending on what you are measuring, a different tool and a different unit may be necessary. Let's focus in on the units of measurements for a minute. There have been many types of different units to measure length or distance. Let's look at just a few of them. There's the meter, the yard, the fathom, the astronomical unit, the cubit, and the furlong. Just to name a few, the list goes on and on. Scientists decided that we needed an international standard unit because everyone was using a different unit to measure the same thing. So the international system of units was created. There are seven international standard units, or in other words, SI units. For measuring distance, the standard unit is the meter. For measuring temperature, the standard unit is the Kelvin. For measuring time, the standard unit is the second. For measuring mass, the standard unit is the kilogram. For measuring the amount of substance, the standard unit is the mole. For measuring electric current, the standard unit is the ampere. And for measuring luminous intensity, the standard unit is the candela. These are the seven SI units. Okay, let's revisit the tools for measuring. As you can imagine, some tools will be more accurate than others. To measure the width of the pencil, for example, we didn't want to use something like a tape measure or a measuring wheel. It'd be very difficult to be accurate. Accuracy can be defined as how close a measurement is to the true value of the quantity being measured. Let's look at an example of this. Two students have the task of measuring the length of this book. Now the actual length of this book is 17 centimeters. Both students will measure the book four times. Jack measured the book to be 17 centimeters, 16 centimeters, 18 centimeters, and then 15 centimeters. While Susan measured the book to be 15.5 centimeters, 15 centimeters, 15.2 centimeters, and 15.3 centimeters. Which of these students was more accurate? Well, if we take the average of Jack's measurements, he had an average of 16.5 centimeters. While Susan had an average of 15.3 centimeters. So the student who was more accurate was Jack, because he was closest to the correct value. Although Jack had the more accurate measurement, we could see that his measurements are kind of all over the place. We have anything from 15 centimeters all the way up to 18 centimeters, so a 3 centimeter difference between those two measurements. Susan, on the other hand, has measurements that are very close together, with the largest difference being 15.5 and 15.0, and so only a 0.5 difference. Although Susan was not accurate, she was very precise in her measurements. Precision is a measure of how close a series of measurements are to one another. Or in other words, a measure of how exact a measurement is. Scientists never make a measurement only once. They always take many measurements to increase precision. If scientists find that they make the same measurement again and again, they can have confidence that their measurement is correct. Or if they find that their measurement is always off by the same amount, they will be able to better figure out what the error is. Maybe, for example, the tool they are using is not calibrated correctly. And maybe it's always off by just one gram less than it should. If we look at Susan's measurements, we can see that generally she's always off by about 2 centimeters. So she may be able to narrow down why this is. Let's take a look at one more example to check for our understanding in this concept. Take a look at these three targets. We can see that somebody has shot arrows at them and that the arrows vary in their accuracy and precision. Let's take a look at the first target. 
we could see that there have been five different arrows shot at this target, and they're kind of all over the place. However, they do have one arrow that has hit right in the bullseye. And so we could say that whoever shot these arrows was accurate. They were not, however, very precise, since they are kind of all over the place. On the second target, we could see that all the arrows are grouped together, kind of above the bullseye. This shooter wasn't very accurate, but they were pretty precise. Finally, take a look at the third target. We can see that all the arrows are right in the center of the bullseye. And so we could say that this shooter was not only accurate, but they were also very precise.